Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I'm gonna to show you an easy way to make abstract art using a plastic bag uh, and acrylic paint. And so uh, what we're gonna do is we're basically going to do kind of my dab technique that I normally do, but with a plastic bag instead of corrugated plastic. And the reason is, is because one, I wanna test it out. I actually tried it with the gloss enamel the other day and it actually worked out. Um, so I'll do more of those videos and we'll try it out in the future. But today I want to do acrylic paint because a lot of people have access, more access to acrylic paint than the gloss enamel. So we're going to see if it, if it can still make a decent painting using acrylic paint as opposed to the gloss enamel. And we're going to use this back. Now I've got, um, just a sheet here. Um, I've got a canvas pad. This is watercolor paper, but again, I always recommend using either uh, canvas sheets or using uh, acrylic paper instead of watercolor paper because acrylic paper is actually a little thicker. I just don't have that size. Um, you can check on Amazon, there's some links below, but you can check on Amazon. I think you might be able to get some bigger uh, sheets of acrylic paper, but that's what I recommend is acrylic paper. Now, what you'll notice is there's a little piece of plastic here. And what this plastic is, is this actually is like a little plastic divider that came in a, a package of canvas that I got from Michaels. So that some of them have these little plastic dividers to separate the canvas and to protect them in the package. So if you get like a value pack of like five, it has like one of these or a couple of them in there to protect the canvas. Well, what I realized is that I can paint in the canvas pad because it keeps it flat. Um, and I don't have to worry about putting on a surface like this, but I can use these little plastic sheets that I got from the canvas in between the papers. So I can paint on this first page and not get paint on the next page below it. So I actually found out that that's a, a really easy way to protect the pages below, but keep it flat. So you could also use wax paper. So if you don't have any of these, you can actually just use some sheets of wax paper, long sheets, and you just put it under this one that you're working on and you wrap it around the rest of the canvas pad and that will actually protect the pages underneath. So it's an interesting uh, technique that I picked up just recently, um, just trying to find other ways to, you know, make it easier to paint. So now that we've got all that squared away, we're gonna go ahead and get painting and we're going to put our, our colors on here and then we're going to dab them onto the canvas paper here. So that's what we're going to do. So we've got our, our bag. This one is from, uh, from Ace Hardware. Don't think it matters where you get your bag from. But anyway, we're going to start with, uh, a, we're going to start with the dark blue and we're actually just going to put this blue right here on our, um, wax paper. And we'll actually just go ahead and put all of our colors out. And we're just gonna space them out so there is a little separation there. And we'll do white here. And then we'll do our brown. So we've got dark blue, light blue, white, and brown. And that's essentially the, the order that we're gonna go. So we're gonna take this paper, this plastic, and we're gonna wad it up. Now, when you wad it up, what you kind of want is you want some real distortion. So you don't want it flat or else it's just going to make flat imprints on the paper. What you want is you want the plastic to kind of be ruffled and to have design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip it a little bit. Okay. And that's going to kind of help separate it out. And I'll just rip it a little bit here and a little bit here. So now we've got some different pieces. So now that we have some kind of edges and some distortion so it's not flat we'll go ahead and start painting so we're going to start with our blue and i already stuck my finger in the white so that's great um, and then we're just going to start uh, dabbing it onto our canvas here so we'll just kind of go all over and you can kind of mess with the how heavy you push onto it uh, how light you do it kind of rotating it but you wanna kinda of keep it in the same part on the bag just because um, we really just want one part of it to be one color. We don't necessarily want those colors to mix yet. So we're gonna take a little bit more paint and we're gonna kinda of really get these different uh, designs in there. And again, you can kind of do some heavier designs, some lighter designs, whatever you wanna do. And I think we've got some good coverage here. Now rotate it, rotate it, cover up 
a little bit more of this white area and I think that's pretty cool. So it, it already looks pretty neat um, as for the, you know, the starting place. Okay, so now that we've got that, we want to kind of move into another color. So we're going to rotate the bag just a little bit and we're going to try to push like some of it in and pull some of it out to get, you know, some ruffles here. And that, I think that's good. So we've got some distortion there. So now we're gonna take it and put it into our, our blue. And we're gonna kind of dab it out a little bit to kind of lose some of the heaviness of the color, if that makes sense. We don't want like big glops, like we got a couple of them here. Um, so if you dab it on the wax paper a couple times before you actually put it to the canvas, then you can kind of, uh, you know, get some of that off of that. You can kind of displace it a little. So we've already got some on there. So we're gonna go ahead and get some more paint and we're going to go ahead and try to cover up some of these little gaps. Okay, now we actually used up all of our paint, so we're gonna go ahead and get some more and I'm just gonna run it out there. And we'll dab it a couple times so that we can kind of spread it out. And then we're gonna push that in and go ahead and try to get some more on here. I'm just kind of tilting it to kind of get the paint onto the canvas or paper I should say all right and we're almost out of paint again so we're really gonna try to pick it up and get some bigger parts in there pass okay so now we've done that so we'll kind of rotate it again and we've got some little pieces here so I'll tuck that in a little bit and then we'll do our white which we probably don't need a whole lot of white since it started off white um, so we're gonna we're going to do it, but just kind of to fill in the design, right? And if someone was looking at the paper, they wouldn't be able to tell if the white that they were seeing was from underneath or from the paint that we added. We'll pick up a little bit more start to kind of unravel so we're gonna put a little bit of that back all right so we're good there so now uh, the sides have all been painted so now we're gonna kind of fold it inward and see if we can get some fresh plastic that hasn't been uh, painted already and since it's smooth we're gonna go ahead and rip it a little bit to kind of give it some texture. And we're gonna try to fold some of it under like that. And now we've got a little bit of texture. So now we'll move on to our last color here. Okay, and we've got our brown, so we'll got brown in there I don't necessarily like the brown per se um, so I, I would probably stop it there 
And what I would do now is just kind of go over it with some of these other colors again, but going kind of back and forth between some of the colors. So we're going to do the blue since they were the, the first two down. And we're going to go back and forth to them to kind of fill it out. Now, one thing I would say is, and I, I kind of put this in the title of the video, is this method is really good for creating backgrounds. So there are a few paintings that I've done where I did this to create a background um, for the painting, and then I put the actual painting in the front. So like, I did like a huge design with a palette knife um, in the middle of it. And I don't have any good colors right now with acrylic or else I'd show you. Um, but just an idea to kind of create paintings. You could always do this as a background with, you know, the colors you want in the background. So I did like a, a gray one. So I did gray, black, and white. And I just kept doing that over and over again. And then once I had the background, then I did a palette knife painting over that kind of in the center of the painting. So now we're going to go back over it. Okay, and then that's it. So I'm gonna stop there and go ahead and throw my gloves away so I can show you guys the painting. Okay, and that's it. So here's the final piece. I'll go ahead and take a snapshot. Um, but yeah, so you can see that doing this, you can kind of get this like really varied stippled kind of look. Um, my recommendation is probably to only use a few colors. Don't go more than like five, but probably even less than that, usually about three. Because um, again, you could do a whole painting like this and, a, and it creates, you know, an, an okay painting. I think it's kind of boring. So I would normally do these as the piece itself. However, if I was doing this as like a, a background for something, like if I was going to put something over this, like, uh, you know, other paint, if I was going to do paint here over this, or if I was going to use this as like, say, a background in a frame with words or something over it. Yeah, you could definitely do all of that for that. And it makes an interesting background, especially choosing better colors. I feel like these colors we use today probably aren't the best together, at least not in this way. Um, so it's not ideal. However, I wanted to kind of give you guys that idea of how to create simple abstract art or even backgrounds, simple abstract backgrounds with the plastic bag and kind of the stippling or dabbing technique that I normally do. So this is one way you can do it. Again, I would more so to use this for backgrounds, but totally your call. Um, just kind of wanted to share that idea with you guys to kind of to give you an idea of something easy that you can do to make these pieces. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. If you did, that's fine. Let me know as well. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe or all that other cool stuff that you do on YouTube and all that. Uh, but thanks again for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care. God bless. Stay safe. And I'll see you then. Bye, guys.